and meet us at our point of need. At this church, they do their best to console each other through hard times. Given the lives that some people here have, it's easy to see why they need a shoulder to lean on. After the service, the church leader took us over the road to an old hut which stores shelves and shelves of food for the local poor. This stock, he told us, will disappear in a single day. People were basically starving. Uh, people were coming up to me in the street. Uh, people were coming to the church on a Sunday saying, do you have any food? Uh, I have been in people's homes where the, 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 the mother or the father have managed to feed the children, but they haven't eaten all weekend. That story could be told anywhere in Britain, but what aggravates the nationalists so much is that it's taking place in the Scottish city of Aberdeen. This, after all, is the energy capital of Europe, where the oil and gas workers earn a fortune and the displays of wealth are obvious. The oil revenues go to London. The nationalists argue that the Scots don't see the profits fairly. Opponents of Scottish independence have argued consistently that this country would genuinely struggle economically if it were to go it alone. They say that Scotland would probably have to put up with years of austerity, and yet the Scottish nationalists argue that in fact the opposite is true. They say that this country is naturally very wealthy. And to try to make that case, they're looking increasingly to the evidence not from their neighbours to the south, but from their neighbours to the north. Turn right over the North Sea from Aberdeen and you get to Copenhagen. The capital of Denmark's become a sort of model for what the SNP sees Scotland's future as. Green energy as well as oil, tourism by the plane load, a society which spends a lot less on defence and a lot more on keeping people happy. Scotland and Denmark have almost identical population sizes and there's not much evidence of food banks here. The SNP's most senior politician in London has become a regular visitor. The entire political philosophy points Scotland away from the transatlantic relationship so loved by London and towards a different new set of friends. One of the best examples of that is Trident, the next generation of weapons of mass destruction, which will cost the best part of uh, £100 billion in its through life costs. That's one of the things that we're going to choose not to spend money on, and by freeing up those resources, we will be able to invest in the fair society that we want and the more economically successful nation that we want Scotland to become. For all that, many Scots remain unconvinced that they're more Danish than British, and the No to Independence campaign, supported by all the main London parties, continues to stay ahead in the polls. But still, the food banks and recycled clothing bins in Boomtown Aberdeen tell a story of obvious inequality, and the worse that gets, the better it's likely to be for the nationalists. Lawrence Lee, Al Jazeera, Aberdeen.